This is section 4.6, complex fractions and a review of the order of operations. First, a definition. A fraction whose numerator or denominator, or both the numerator and denominator contain fractions is called a complex fraction. Here's some examples of what complex fractions looks like. Here we have 1 sixth over 2 thirds. Since in this case both the numerator and denominator contain fractions, then this is a complex fraction. Another example would be this one. In the numerator we have 1 sixth plus 1 half. In the denominator, 1 third plus 3 fourths. Now what we're going to do with these is to try and simplify them. And to do that, we have to remember, first of all, that a fraction bar means division. When we go back to our order of operations, since the fraction bar counts as a grouping symbol, then we have to simplify the numerator and denominator separately first, and then divide. And also remember that when we're dividing fractions, we have to multiply by the reciprocal of our divisor. So in other words, we take the fraction that we're dividing by, flip it over, and turn it into a multiplication. So let's look at an example here. The one we had in the last slide was 1 sixth over 2 thirds. So this fraction bar right here means that this is division. And that means that we could actually write this out as 1 sixth divided by 2 thirds. And that would tell us to make this a multiplication by taking our second fraction and flipping it over which makes it 3 halves. So now all we have to do is multiply our two fractions. Remember that we multiply the numerators and multiply the denominators. So basically we just multiply straight across. And while we're doing this, now we don't have to write the 1 here. Let's do our prime factorization on the bottom. So 6 is 2 times 3 and that tells us that we can cancel out a 3. Now we do technically have the 1 left here, so that gives us a 1 on the top and a 4 on the bottom. So there's our fraction that we started out with being very complicated, and we've simplified it down to just 1 fourth. Okay, let's do some more examples. This is just like the one we just did. Remember that this means division. So we could go ahead and write this out with our division symbol, or we could just remember that this is the number that would come second in our division. So we could just go ahead and rewrite this as a multiplication. We'd have 16 sevenths. We're turning this division into a multiplication and then we're taking this fraction and flipping it over. That makes it 7 eighths. So this is kind of a shortcut. If, you, if this skips too many steps for you, then you can go ahead and write this out to start with as a division problem. So write this out as 16 sevenths divided by 8 sevenths. And then you can do the step of turning this into a multiplication and flipping over your fraction. So either way, we're going to get to the same place here. Now again, since we're doing multiplication, we're just going straight across, multiplying numerators and multiplying denominators. Right away, we can see that we can cancel out a 7. And let's just factor this down a little bit. Since 16 is 2 times 8, we don't even have to factor this down any further. We can see that we could cancel out an 8. That gives us just a 1 on the bottom, which means that this turns out just to be 2. Now let's look at this one. This is even more complicated. And here's where we have to remember that we have to simplify in the numerator So this is our first step. Our second step is going to be to simplify our denominator. And then our last step will actually be to do a division like what we did on our previous example. So to simplify in our numerator, that means we have to take 1 sixth plus 1 half. Those two are unlike fractions. We have to get a common denominator. So let's think about 6 is 2 times 3 and oops, 2 
is prime. So our LCD there would be just 2 times 3, or 6. So for our first fraction here, we don't have to change anything. It already has the LCD that we want. For the 1 half, if we want to write that with a denominator of 6, we have to multiply both numerator and denominator by 3. That gives us on the top 1 6 plus 3 6. And let's just leave this on the bottom just like it is, since we're not worrying about that part yet. Okay, if we're adding 1 6 and 3 6, then we have 6 as our denominator. On the top, we have, oops, 1 plus 3. We still have this stuff down here. That gives us 4 6. in our numerator. And while we're doing this, we might as well simplify as much as possible, just to save ourselves some work in the end. So for 4 sixths, we know that 4 is 2 times 2, 6 is 2 times 3, so we could actually cancel a 2 there, and that would give us 2 thirds in our numerator. Okay, so we've finished our first step of simplifying our numerator. Now we're going to look at our denominator and simplify it. So if we have our two denominators, our 3 and 4, the prime factorization of 4 is 2 times 2, and that gives us an LCD of 2 times 2 times 3, or 12. For 1 third, if we want to write that with a denominator of 12, we have to multiply the numerator and denominator by 4, so that would be 4 twelfths. 3 fourths, we'd have to multiply the denominator by 3, and that gives us an equivalent fraction of 9 twelfths. We still have our 2 thirds up here that we already simplified. Now in our denominator, instead of the 1 3rd, we have 4 twelfths. Instead of the 3 fourths, we have 9 twelfths. Our denominator there is going to be 12, since it's the one those two had in common. And on the top of that, we have 4 plus 9. And that gives us 13 twelfths for our denominator. Since 13 is prime, there isn't anything that we can do to simplify this fraction. Now we're down to a division problem. And again, we could go through the steps like we did here of writing the division in and then flipping over our second one. So let's do it that way first. So we have 2 thirds divided by 13 twelfths. And we can rewrite that as a multiplication problem, but to do that we have to flip over our second fraction. That becomes 2 thirds times 12 thirteenths. And again, you could skip this step of writing out the division problem if you remember that your fraction bar means division, and what's under it is the same as the one that comes second in this one. Okay, so now we have 2 times 12 and 3 times 13. And let's write out our prime factorization of 12, which is 2 times 2 times 3. Because we have a 3 on the bottom, so we can cancel those 3's. That gives us 2 times 2 times 2 over 13, or 8 thirteenths. And that is our final answer. Now that we know how to do pretty much everything with fractions, let's go back through the order of operations. Remember that our first operation is to do anything that's in grouping symbols, and those include parentheses, brackets, absolute values, and fraction bars. Next we evaluate any expressions that have exponents. After that we multiply or divide in order from left to right, and finally we add or subtract in order from left to right. Here are some examples where we're using the order of operations to simplify expressions 
and our expressions include fractions. So if we have 1 fourth plus 1 fourth times 1 third, then the first operation that we need to do here is this one. Since we don't have any grouping symbols, we don't have any exponents, then our first operation to do is the multiplication. If we do that multiplication, on the top we get 1, and on the bottom 4 times 3 is 12. Now the only other operation we have is the addition. To do this we have to get a common denominator. If we think about our prime factorizations here, we have 2 times 2 for the 4, and our 12 is 2 times 2 times 3. So our LCD would be 2 times 2 times 3, which is 12. That means the only one of these fractions we have to change is the first one, the 1 fourth. So let's think about 1 fourth. We want to write this with a denominator of 12. We're going to have to take 4 times a 3 to get 12. We're multiplying that same number on the top, and that gives us 3 twelfths. So 1 fourth is equivalent to 3 twelfths. That means we have 3 twelfths plus 1 twelfth, which is equal to 3 plus 1 over 12, and that gives us 4 twelfths. Now we need to check and see if this is in simplest form. 4 is 2 times 2, 12 is 2 times 2 times 3, and that means we can cancel out two sets of 2's. Remember that when we cancel everything out here, we still have a 1 left, and that gives us a final answer of 1 third. All right, now let's look at this one. This one we have a division, and we have an addition, and we have a grouping symbol of parentheses. So our first step is to work inside here, and that means we have to do that addition. We have to add the 7 eighths plus the 7 sixteenths. So between 8 and 16, again we're doing our prime factorizations to find our LCD. 8 is 2 times 2 times 2, and 16 is actually ends up being 2 to the 4th. So our LCD is going to be 2 to the 4th, because remember we have to write the factor down the most number of times it occurs in any one prime factorization, and it occurred four times here, so we have to use it four times. Now for our 7 eighths, we're going to have to rewrite that one so that it has a denominator of 16. It means we do have to multiply the numerator and denominator by 2, which would give us 14 sixteenths for an equivalent fraction. So we have 3 halves divided by 14 sixteenths plus 7 sixteenths. And notice that we're not worrying about this division yet at all. We're, we're working inside of our parentheses. We'll, we'll deal with that division later. Now we have like fractions in here, so our denominator is 16. On the top we have 14 plus 7. And 14 plus 7 gives us 21. On the bottom we have 16. Notice I left the parentheses off because we've done everything to simplify inside the parentheses now. Now we just have a division problem, so we're going to turn this into a multiplication by flipping over our second fraction. Now we have 3 halves times 16 over 21. So on the top, we have 3, and then our prime factorization of 16 is 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. On the bottom, we have 2 times 21, which would be the same as 3 times 7. Well, if we look, we do have some common factors. There's a 3 that we can cancel out, and there's a 2 that we can cancel out. That leaves us with 2 times 2 times 2 on the top and 7 on the bottom. 2 times 2 times 2 is 8, and that gives us a final answer of 8 sevenths.
one more here. In this one, we, we have an exponent. We don't have any other grouping symbols, so our next step is to look for exponents. That means that that's the first operation that we have to do. Now let's write this out as a multiplication because 2 thirds squared is just the same as 2 thirds times 2 thirds. Which means that we could write it this way. Now still multiplication comes before addition or subtraction. And here we're just multiplying 2 times 2 on the top, 3 times 3 on the bottom, and that gives us 4 ninths. Now we have an addition and subtraction. Since we don't have any other operations, we can actually do this all at once. So let's look at this as just being three different fractions, and let's find the LCD for all three of these at the same time. So for 2, our prime factorization is 2. 9 is 3 times 3, and 3 is 3. So our LCD is going to be 2 times 3 times 3, which gives us 18. For the 1 half, if we, if we want to write that with a denominator of 18, we'd have to multiply by 9. We have 9 eighteenths there. For the 4 ninths, we'd have to multiply by 2 to get 18. That means our equivalent fraction is 8 eighteenths. Then for the 1 third, we'd have to multiply by 6 to get 18. So there we have, instead of 1 third, we have 6 eighteenths. Since we have three like fractions, we can write all of this over one denominator of 18. And on the top we have 9 plus 8 minus 6. And that gives us 17 minus 6, which is 11. Since 11 is prime, then that means that this is in simplest form. So we're done. Now we can also evaluate expressions with variables if we have replacement values. So let's take these three replacement values and look at some expressions that we can evaluate. So the first one is 3x minus z. Now remember to do this, we're putting in parentheses in place of our variables. For this first parentheses, we're replacing x with negative one-fifth. For the second one, we're replacing z with seven-tenths. So now, if we look at our operations we have, there's a multiplication here. That one is going to come first. And if you're multiplying a whole number times a fraction, you can actually rewrite your whole number as a fraction, just to make it a little bit easier to do the multiplication. So 3 is actually the same as 3 over 1. So our multiplication we can rewrite like this. We have 3 over 1 times a negative 1 over 5. And then when we do our multiplication, we can just go straight across. So on the top we have 3 times negative 1. On the bottom we have 1 times 5. Now, 3 times negative 1 would give us negative 3. That whole thing will be negative 3 fifths. And then we have minus 7 tenths. Now our next operation to do is a subtraction, and we have unlike fractions. So we'll have to get a least common denominator. Since 5 is prime and 10 is 2 times 5, then our LCD will be 2 times 5, or just 10. Now let's go ahead right here and see if we can rewrite this so that we have a denominator of 10. Well, to get 10, we'd have to multiply 2 times 5. 
So we're multiplying that in the numerator and denominator. That gives us on the top a negative 6 and on the bottom a 10. Now our denominator will be 10 because that's the number that these two had in common. On the top we have negative 6 minus 7. If we subtract those two, we get negative 13. Since 13 is prime, there's nothing that we can do to simplify this. We can just put our negative out in front, and our answer is negative 13 tenths. Okay, let's do one more example. Let's evaluate the expression x plus y over z. We're replacing the x with a negative one-fifth, the y with a three-fifths, and the z with seven-tenths. And if we write this without the parentheses, notice what we have here since we have fractions in the numerator and the denominator, then that makes this a complex fraction. And if we remember our order of operations here, we have to simplify in the numerator because the fraction bar counts as a grouping symbol. Luckily, these two are like fractions, since they both have a denominator of 5. So that gives us negative 1 plus 3 on the top and 5 on the bottom. And we still have our 7 tenths down here. Negative 1 plus 3 would be 2. That gives us 2 fifths divided by 7 tenths. And if we write this out, Then if we are dividing fractions, we have to turn this into a multiplication and flip over our second one. That gives us 2 fifths times 10 sevenths. Now we're just multiplying straight across. And let's factor our 10 into 2 times 5. All of our other numbers here are prime, so we don't have to factor them. But this way we can see that there's a 5 that we can cancel out. That leaves us on the top with 2 times 2 and a 7 on the bottom. And that gives us an answer of 4 sevenths.